So today we're going to talk about the four main classes of macromolecules. And a macromolecule is an organic compound. And in order for something to be an organic compound, it has to be comprised of at least uh, two elements, carbon and hydrogen. And these macromolecules are made up of smaller organic molecules known as monomers. So let's make a table of the different types of macromolecules. They're monomers. And the indicators that we can use in the lab in order to identify them. And the first macromolecule is protein. The monomer that makes up proteins is called an amino acid. And the indicator that we can use to detect protein is called BRAT. BRAT is a blue colored solution. And when it is added to anything that contains protein, it's going to go from a blue color to a purple color. So to detect the presence of protein, we can use Biorette. So if you see, here is my uh, solution of Biorette. And I'm going to add a few drops. One of them contains protein, and one of them will serve as a control of just plain water. As you can see, the one that has protein turned purple, while the other one stays blue. So in the presence of protein, Biorette will turn purple. The second macromolecule is lipids. And the monomer that makes up lipids is known as a fatty acid. And two indicators that we can use to detect lipids. One is called the emulsion test, where we take our lipid and we add it to some alcohol to dissolve it. And then we add water. And since lipids are nonpolar and water is polar, they're not going to mix such that when the lipid and alcohol react with the water, you're going to get uh, precipitation. So basically your test tube is going to turn cloudy because the lipid and the water are precipitating. The other way that you can detect lipids is by using Sudan Red. And for Sudan red, if anything contains lipid, then it's going to turn red. To detect the presence of lipids, we can use the emulsion test. So here I have two test tubes. One contains uh, some vegetable oil, a uh, lipid. And as a control, we have some water. So the first step is to uh, take our uh, substance that we think has lipid in it and we're going to add a small amount of alcohol. I'm going to mix that up. I'll just let that sit for a second. And to our water we'll add a little bit of alcohol. After adding the alcohol, you let the test tube sit for a few moments, and then we will take some water and add it. And as you can see, a precipitate has started to form, indicating the presence of lipids. While in the case of my control here of just water, adding more water, no precipitation occurs. 
So this one is positive for lipids. To look for fat, we can use Sudan red as a stain. So this slide here shows uh, adipose connective tissue or fat tissue. And if you can look, you see the red spots here indicate fat bodies. Our third macromolecule is nucleic acids. And this includes your DNA and your RNA. And the monomer that makes up nucleic acid is known as a nucleotide. And the indicator that we can use to detect nucleic acids is called methylene blue. And if there is any nucleic acids present, then the methylene blue will turn it blue. So it turns blue. To look for nucleic acids, we can use methylene blue. And uh, an example with methylene blue we can use is staining cheek cells. So I will take a uh, glass slide and my wax pencil. And I'm going to draw a circle. I'm then going to take a sterile swab and swab for some cheek cells. And then I'm going to smear it into my circle. Allow that to air dry for a second. And then we're going to heat fix it. So we're going to pass this slide through the Bunsen burner that's going to remove the water and uh, fix the cells to the slide such that when I add the stain, the cells won't rinse off. So I'll turn on my gas. Take my clothespin. And I'm going to pass it through the flame three times. Once, twice, thrice. I'm going to put my slide onto the staining tray and then I'm going to add a few drops of methylene blue. So methylene blue again stains for uh, nucleic acids like DNA. So when I look at my cheek cells, the nucleus of my cell should be stained blue because DNA is found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. We let the stain uh, sit for a moment and then we rinse with some deionized water. Tap off the excess and then we can look at the cells using the microscope. Okay. So here we see uh, one of my cheek cells and as you can see the nucleus here has stained blue because of the methylene blue. Methylene blue again stains for nucleic acids, hence why our nucleus is blue because it contains DNA. The fourth and final macromolecule is the carbohydrates. also known as polysaccharides, also known as complex sugars. And the monomer that makes up carbohydrates or polysaccharides or complex sugars are the simple sugars. And sometimes these simple sugars are also called monosaccharides or a disaccharide. Mono for having one carbon ring and disaccharide for having two carbon rings. And there are two indicators that you can use for carbohydrates. One is called Benedict's reagent and Benedict's is what we use for the simple sugars. Benedix is a blue solution, and if it turns from blue to any other color, so not blue, then simple sugars are present. And the other indicator we can use is Lugol's iodine, 
which we can use to detect starch. And starch is an example of a complex sugar. And iodine will go from a brown color to a bluish black color. To detect simple sugars, we can use uh, Benedict's reagent. So notice Benedict's is blue in color. Going to add some to some glucose I have here. And as my control to some water. Now Benedict's needs a few minutes to heat up, so I'm going to take my two test tubes and I'm going to put them in the water bath. And then about three to five minutes, we'll take them out and then look to see what color they've changed. So five minutes has gone by, and now if we take a look, we can see that the one that contained glucose went from a blue color to, you know, orange. So glucose is present, and in my control, it stayed blue, so no glucose is present. To detect starch, we can use uh, some Lugol's iodine. So here I have a test tube that contains a starch solution, and here in my control I have some water. So I'll add a few drops of iodine, and you can see it turned from a brownish color to a black color, indicating the presence of starch. And for my control, here is some uh, water, and a few drops, and you can see that it remains brown. So uh, when it turns black, that indicates the presence of starch.